Today, the 19th of May, um, at the Hotel Opera in Oslo, and it's uh, Rebecca Jorgensen. She's here for the fourth time in Norway, training Norwegian family and couples therapists in EFT, Emotional Focused Therapy. And we're so happy to have you, and um, it's, uh, it's a wonderful, and almost magical experience, I think, um, to be here with you again and uh, learn more about EFT. What I'd really like to know is, how did you discover this very interesting uh, therapeutic method and what has it done to your own practice as a therapist? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, those are two very big yes, questions. They're all I very know. big questions. I know. Oh, I discovered EFT when I was taking couple training with John Gottman. Oh, okay. And he said, if you want to know good couple research, you should read Sue Johnson. Yeah, right. And so I started to read Sue Johnson. And I thought that if you could read it, you could do it. So I read it, yes. I thought I was doing it. And then a few years later, I had the chance mm -hmm. to go to Ottawa and see Sue Johnson do what I'm doing now, yeah. teach at an externship. And I went, oh my goodness, that's not anything like what mm. I'm doing. So I walked away from that experience saying, I had no idea, mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't think there's anyone else in any other therapist that I know that knows this. And I have to help spread that word. This is, too, this is very important. So I walked away with a fire to try to help other therapists, help, uh, help couples. Right. Yeah. Because it's quite challenging to work with couples. They it's, quarrel and they are uh, very tough on each other. And, uh, Sometimes, as a therapist, you can feel rather helpless. Uh, so, what did it help you? As oh, a it totally helped me as yeah. a therapist. Yeah, because I was it was abysmal. My therapy with couples was just about as average <laughs> as it would get, which means most couples left divorced <laughs> instead of getting happy. Right. So, it totally changed uh, my outcome rates, which made me feel so effective. And mm. to be able to have a system, a way to work, a way to interact with the couples that helps them really hear each other because they're fighting to really make connection and it's not working. And we can help them make the connection that they really want. Yeah. Do you think you, it made you better therapist? And do you, do you think it made um, uh, being a ther therapist uh, more safe? more safe place oh, it, for you too as a yeah, therapist? It makes, it makes being a therapist safe and fun. Right. <laughs> because when you're, you, we beca I became a therapist to help. Yeah. Right? That was in my heart, to help couples and to help families. Right. And to see that I'm really making that difference that I always wanted to make is huge. And so it makes it fun, it makes it safe, and I'm not only a better therapist, but really a better person because yeah understanding about human nature and how we get stuck and learning about mm. emotions has helped me be a more compassionate person to myself and to other people. Yeah, it's made me made my whole world better. Okay, so it's yes. a personal development as well connected with this. Personal and professional yeah, development. That's right. Yeah. Earlier today you said um, if you talk or if you if you ask questions from a curious place it means you are more safe because curiosity is a fun feeling yes uh, um, compared with fear and anxiety yes. yes so that's what you're talking about now the curiosity, yes, the, positive curiosity, curiosity. the positivity and right. the wonderment yes. and the uh, um, being able to kind of explore mm -hmm. right we're kind of explorers and creative right. by right. nature as human beings when we're feeling safe we explore and we create and so having, being a therapist and having that safety really allows a lot of creativity and a lot of fun, a lot of uh, curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. Because a very, very important thing, I think, must be to, to help the therapists to, be, to become more curious and uh, be able to release um, their own, uh, what should I say, their creativity and not being so afraid and not being yeah. so perfectionist or 
uh, technical in their heads and not going up in their yes. uh, cognitive brain all the time. That's that's one of your aims, isn't it? Yeah, that to is help one of the aims, to, get to help us to, yeah. as therapists, to be that safe space, yes. to create therapy yeah. as a safe space. Yes. And that helps us when we can be curious. Mm. But the other thing is when we feel safe with our own emotion, and we mm. feel safe, we're, then we're not so judgmental, right. either critical yeah. of our clients. Like I might in my head be thinking, why did that partner ever say that <laughs> dumb thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and if I understand, and I'm compassionate, and I understand why they get caught in the way they caught, get caught, then um, I'm compassionate. And I'm not myself in a judge, either a judgmental place or a shutdown place, thinking, oh, that couple. Mm, I don't know if I can help them. I don't want to explore that. Right. So it's, it makes you kinder. It makes me kinder. Yeah. Kinder, more hopeful, yeah. compassionate. Because when you're using EFT, you're, the success rate, when you learn how to do it, well, it takes time to learn. But when you do, your success rate is so so high that couples can come in and you have this confidence mm -hmm. that I can help you so you can you have hope for couples mm -hmm. who want to make it work even when they're in bad situations mm -hmm. right I think another challenge must be for all these therapists that you meet they have to de-learn or decode some of the stuff they yes. have clung to for all these years and some of the things they've learned. Yes. How do you think that uh, works out? Both learning new things and, what should I say, de-learning yes. stuff well, at the same time. You know, it, it can be very hard. Yeah. If we, uh, to adopt a philosophy of being a lifelong learner, mm -hmm. to say, I don't know it all, when we come from institutions that say, I'm teaching you how to do this, mm -hmm. and now I have this, and I know <laughs> yeah. how to do it, to stay open to stay open to new learning and to be back in a learner role instead of the professional that knows it all can be very threatening to I mean I when I first learned EFT I felt so sad for all of the couples that I thought I could have saved before before yes right <laughs> and so uh, moving into oh you know it's okay to be learning because when when we learn, there's always things we didn't know before. But to have that attitude of, I'm always a beginner, I can learn from every new situation and new couples is really an important part of gaining new mastery. If you should mention a couple of things that um, new therapists or new EFT therapists should remember uh, when they sit there with a couple and uh, with porridge in their head, <laughs> could, they, could you help them just cling to one or two rules that could uh, uh, help them to calm down in the situation. Yeah, well that is the first one, mm -hmm. is to be, be aware of needing to calm down. <laughs> yeah. And so when I first learned to say out loud, um, hold on a minute, I'm a little lost, it was very helpful mm -hmm. just to say it in the room, for like you. for me. And the couples didn't mind, you know, I'd say, mm -hmm. oh, I'm maybe a little confused here. Mm -hmm. I need, just let me think for a second about what to do next, or what to say next. I would, when I learned to start to say that out loud, when I was feeling that porridge in my head, <laughs> then the clouds cleared, right? And I could kind of get back on track to, mm. I'm, what I'm really trying to do is be connected to each one of them and, and their system. Okay. Yeah, and so one kind of saying it out loud where I am and that I may need some help with where we're at. Right. And then the other thing is to always go back to where, where they get caught yeah. with curiosity. If you can keep going back to that pattern where they get caught, you'll be able to help them get unstuck. Cool. We're in, uh, in connection, we're making resonance with our clients. Really that attunement, that empathic attunement. Right. So those three things, slowing myself down, yeah. slowing them down if I need to, but certainly slowing myself down going back to the pattern and remembering it's about the attunement. Right, very yeah. important. I remember you once said, um, we also have to take care of ourselves, so we have to keep a working distance 
to what we're doing when we're working with couples. Maybe that could be a kind of advice too. Yes. Um, and how do we do that? How do we keep a working distance uh, with the couples? Well, emotions are can be overwhelming. Yeah. And when you've got a couple in the room, the emotion can be strong, really hot or really hard emotion, either way. And so we're trying to maintain a working distance ourselves and have them have a working distance, which means I can feel my emotion and I can talk about it while it's happening. I'm not going to be overwhelmed either to the point that I can't talk about it or to the point that I have to do something because emotion moves us to do something. So if I can be in touch with the emotion and talk about it rather than acting out on it or, or not feeling it at all, then I'm in good working distance. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Good. It's, Thank you so much. it's always wonderful to be here in Norway and to be with the program that you are developing, you and your colleagues here at EFT North. And so I appreciate um, all that you're doing to help other couples in, in the world. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.